G'day, my name's Chris Muir. I'm an ADF product manager working for Oracle Corporation and thanks for coming along to this ADF Architecture TV episode today. Now today's episode is going to be another one where we're going to talk about not design or architecture, but we're going to talk about the getting started phase of an ADF project. So the things that team leaders and project managers need to get in place to get an ADF project up and running. Now, in looking at today's getting started content, we actually, as ADF product managers, get questions all the time, and we often notice we get the same questions again and again and again. And one of the questions we do get quite often is, well, ignoring the ADF runtime environment, what software does Oracle recommend to support our ADF developers? So what this question is asking is not about the runtime ADF software that's required. It's more about the development software or the software to support the development process, you know, actually writing software. So the JDeveloper IDE is an example, but all the peripheral tools and pieces of software that you need in order to support a software project, a modern contemporary complex software project. And notice the word project coming up there because yes, okay, writing software is about writing code, but you need a lot of supporting tools to assist the project project management tools, issue tracking tools, and so on and so forth. And that's what we'd like to address in answering that question from earlier on. So in answering that question, let's identify five broad categories of software that will assist the overall software development process, particular ADF projects. The first one is version control software, which you'll use to check in and out and keep copies of the various versions of your code. The second is application lifecycle management tools or ALM tools and these typically deal with issues, project management and all the things that go around the peripheral of organising a project. Automated testing software, so this is software that's designed to assist you to test your ADF applications but not just delay, assist you but also will be able to replay or automate those tests and replay them again and again such that you don't have to manually go through and run the test yourself. Continuous integration software, effectively software that on maybe a nightly or a weekly basis checks all your code out of version control and builds it to see if there's any compile errors or runs the automated tests or deploys your applications to your dev, your test and your production environments. In addition, we'll look at also some other tools and mention them just briefly just to give you an idea of what other tools are out there that you might want to consider. So first, let's investigate version control software, or VCS. Apache Subversion, or SVN, has been the VCS of choice for JDeveloper for a significant amount of time as it, been, as it has been directly built into the IDE. Arguably, Subversion is still the most common Java VCS software package, and also arguably, most developers in the Java and Oracle space will be familiar with this solution, making it worth considering. However, more recently Git, or JIT, depending on how you want to pronounce it, has received a lot of publicity and is quite popular with developers. JDeveloper introduced native support for JIT in 11.1.1.6.0, but it was changed to an extension in JDeveloper 11.1.1.7.0. While SVN is still built into the IDE and is the primary VCS supported, Git is a primary solution in Oracle's Developer Cloud Services, or ODCS for short, and is therefore likely to remain well supported from Oracle's perspective. You are not constrained to these two version control solutions though, because through JDeveloper's help check for updates feature, you can download other VCS extensions to plug into your organization's VCS of choice. As seen here, these extensions can also be manually downloaded from OTN. From here you have choices like Perforce, Clearcase and older VCS systems such as CVS. Now remember the question is what software does Oracle recommend? Well, while we do support all the VCS extensions, notably again, Subversion is built into the IDE and receives our primary focus. This should shape your choice. Next, let's consider ALM or Application Lifecycle Management Tools. As described on Wikipedia, an ALM tool is one that assists the process of managing the life of an application through governance, development and its maintenance. ALM is the marriage of business management to software engineering made possible by tools that facilitate and integrate requirements man management, architecture, coding, testing, tracking and release management. A very typical ALM tool is that of the issue tracker, maintaining a list of issues for your software products. Allowing users and QA staff to lodge issues, managers to prioritise those issues and developers to fix the software and update the issue based on the outcome. 
Currently popular issue tracking in trackers include Bugzilla, Jira and Track. From Oracle's perspective, we don't have a preference on any of these. They all have their pros and cons, but to say to you, you should be at least using one of these. It's a best practice. It's worth also mentioning Oracle has Oracle Team Productivity Center that is designed to allow these tools to integrate into the JDeveloper IDE. This allows developers to manage issues from the IDE itself rather than having to log into the issue tracker. However, note this isn't critical. You can still use these tools without Team Productivity Center. The choice is yours. We should also consider software testing tools and specifically automated tools such that you can run again and again the same test to check the quality of your software. At the code level, JDeveloper supports unit testing by JUnit. Oracle's ADF team highly recommends customers encourage developers to make use of JUnit to test the quality of the Java code in an automated fashion. Indeed, the whole software engineering of test-driven development, or TDD, proposes developers should be writing unit tests as a matter of course during development. At a higher level, ADF delivers web HTML based applications, and tools like Selenium, or Oracle's own application test suite, commonly known as OATS, provides powerful web testing solutions. The advantage of OATS over competing third-party products is it has intelligence built in to understand ADF applications, saving you some legwork in configuring it. A free offering for load and stress testing is Apache JMeter. The interface for this tool is, could be considered rather primitive, but quite a few customers have used it successfully to load and stress test their ADF applications. Another key consideration in terms of software on your developer PCs is browsers. Obviously with ADF applications, we're developing browser-based applications. And from the perspective of the developer, they'll be using the browser to obviously see what the application is doing, but also testing that the application is doing the right thing. Now this leads into the discussion that really your developers, their PCs should be or should have installed multiple different browsers and versions such that they can test against different browsers to see if there's any issues and in turn that you know in reality customers are also going to have different browsers who are using our ADF systems so you really want the developers to encounter any issues using all these different browsers before the customer does. Now within the context of deploying ADF within an enterprise, I can probably hear that some customers, well I should say some of Oracle's customers who are using ADF will say, well, we tie down on our standard operating environment for our PCs, we tie down the browser so that we don't have to worry about testing on all the different browsers. But that's really just a point of view in time. How do you know in five years time that you aren't going to move to a new browser technology because, because of some other product that you have Within your, uh, within your standard MOE that you have to test or you have to run on that browser. So don't keep this sort of blinkered uh, look into which browsers you're using. Open it up, allow your developers to install all sorts of different browsers on their machines and test the application thoroughly. Keep in mind too, these days when we're talking about browsers, we're not just about talking about browsers like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, because now you have in ADF, the server-based version of ADF, you have support for mobile browsers as well, that being Android and iOS. So you really do want, in turn, hopefully your developers at some stage will access your internal systems using say an iPad or an iPhone or an Android tablet, and just check that everything's working okay from those platforms as well. The next thing you need to do is encourage your developers to do testing across the different platforms. Now, your rigorous test specifications should do that anyway, but you want developers to squeeze out those browser issues early on. So maybe rather than relying on your developers who have all these different browsers installed on their machines to use uh, the different browsers. Maybe you need to encourage them on a day-by-day -day basis to use a different browser while developing their applications. I know personally I like using uh, Google's Chrome and so to get me off that platform you've really got to say to me well on Monday you should use Internet Explorer 7, on Tuesday Internet Explorer 8, on Wednesday Chrome, on Thursday Firefox, on Friday Safari. Get the general idea there, you need to mix it up, otherwise your developers will, um, won't necessarily pursue the testing on the different platforms. Another thing to keep in mind is in terms of installing all those browsers, 
it's not just the developer PCs that you need to keep in mind, there's also the quality assurance or QA staff's browsers as well, or I should say their machines in which browsers you're going to install. So everything that you configure on the developer's machines, you probably need a set of stable QA machines with the different browsers and different versions installed so they can do their rigorous testing to find any additional problems. Finally, in terms of browsers and the, the software that's installed, it's wise to think about the extensions that those browsers provide in order to make the developer's jobs easier. For instance, on Firefox, a very uh, important or useful extension for developers is Firebug, and in Oracle Chrome it has its own developer tools extensions, which make debugging and looking at problems, cascading stylesheet problems, JavaScript problems, at the developer's level or on the developer's PC much easier. So you have a little bit of a wider think about the software that's available through, uh, to you on the browsers beyond just the browsers themselves. So that concludes this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. And what we're going to look at in the next episode is a little bit of an extension of what we just looked at. Rather than talking about the developer's software, we're going to talk about the developer's hardware. Though Oracle has minimum software requirements, I should say minimum hardware requirements for the developer PCs, we're going to go a little bit beyond that and talk beyond the minimum, what you really need for an actual real setup for developers to ensure that they're productive. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you at the next one.